Hello everybody and welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. I've had a couple of you guys out there ask me about this thing, my oven. Well, that's what this video is going to be over. I built this oven. Now, obviously it does look hand built. I mean, it's not one of the $5,000 jobs that you see on YouTube and you know, it, it's, it, it works great. All right. And I saved $4,000 by building my own versus buying one. Now, there are some benefits to buying one. Uh, there are some benefits to building your own, uh, 4,000 of them, as a matter of fact. So, I want to give you a quick rundown of how I built this and, you know, the components I use and everything like that. Basically, I spent $1,000 on materials and I ended up with a walk-in oven it's four foot by four foot by seven foot on the internal volume. Comes out to be 112 cubic feet. That's plenty for me uh, for doing motorcycle frames, for uh, I did a couple of narrowed rear ends for some drag racers. Uh, that job came out fine. Done some frames, they did fine. And it gives me plenty of room to walk around in there while I'm hanging these large parts up. Also, you can do smaller parts to them if you want to, but I normally use a used kitchen oven that I bought used. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you little details about this and hope you can get something out of it. And if you want to build your own, go for it. I highly suggest that you should. First thing I want to do is point out these locks here. All right. I have three of them and here's a close up of what one of them looks like. And it, it's just a basic hinge lock that keeps the door, well, obviously locked. You don't need three of them. Uh, I kind of over-engineered this to some respect. Uh, one is sufficient. Now I built this in six pieces, six sides, uh, top, bottom, and of course, four sides. And I assembled them in this room. Now, when you go to assemble this, if you do build one, it's a two man job, all right? The materials that I personally wanted to use is the metal studs, the metal tuba fours that a lot of people use in commercial building. Only problem is I had about 155 of them. I didn't need 155. So I just went ahead and went down to the people I typically buy steel from and bought rectangular tubing, uh, one and a half by four inches. Works fine. A little heavier than what I wanted, but hey, that's okay. Now, I want to go ahead and open up the door on this thing. Let you guys take a look on the inside. The basic components I use for building this, like I said, half by four inch rectangular tubing and 22 gauge sheet metal. Now, this is galvanized because I didn't want it to rust. The tools you need to do this with, uh, obviously a welder, a drill, and a saw. Now, I did use tin snips, the air powered ones, to cut the sheet metal out. Uh, that's pretty much a must. I'm not going to sit there with scissors and. Uh uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, went down to Harbor Freight, got me some uh, air powered tin snips. It worked fantastic. Now, if you look on the inside here, let me move the camera. Now, the heater I'm using is a propane heater, obviously. Uh, and it's 30 to 80,000 BTUs. I didn't know exactly what size I would need, so I bought this monster. You do not need one that goes up to 80,000 BTUs in order to heat 112 cubic feet. It's way, way overkill. Basically what I do is I turn this thing on and crack it just to open a little bit takes 20 minutes for this to get up to 400 degrees, which is my typical operating temperature. That's all you need. So a uh, 30,000 BTU would more than probably suffice. And this works fine, okay? The problem that I do have with it is there's no thermostat. So I have to be in here with it and watch the gauge on the outside uh, it's just a barbecue pit gauge is all I'm using and it works fine. I, ch I checked it with a laser thermometer. Uh, that's pretty much a must if you're going to be powder coating to make sure your substrate, the actual part that you're powder coating is up to temperature. And I've checked it against the thermometer that I put on the side of this and they're spot on, man. No problem there. So, you know, 
If it does get up a little bit above 400, all I do is I crack the door open, wave it a little bit, let some of the hot air out, lock it back up, works great. You gotta remember, if you're powder coating, you only need to leave those parts in after they hit flow point. Uh, you only need to leave them in there for 20 minutes. So, you know, that's standing around for 20 minutes while Sutton powder coats is not that big of a deal. And I am working with gas, so you don't want to walk away from something like that. If you notice, the line, the gas line going to this heater is yellow. It's a metal line, which I do highly suggest that you do use, uh, at least for the inside part. I, just for safety reasons, I don't think 400 degrees would actually hurt a rubber tube, but I'm not going to test that theory out. Basically, it's a box that I built, threw a propane heater in it, ran a metal line to it, and it, it worked. Okay, my design worked. Now, as far as the insulation that I used on this, it's simply rock wool insulation. That's it. And I got that at Lowe's. And here's a picture of it. There's a price on it. it, it I can't remember how many rolls it took. Uh, I, actually, I think I did it with one. I, I take that back. I had to buy two to finish it out, or if I remember right. Anyway, the rock wool works great. When this thing is up to 400 degrees, I can lay my hand on the outside of it where the actual insulation is on the sheet metal and it's room temperature. I mean, it's not hot, it's barely even warm at all. Now here on the frame itself, yeah, they get hot. So, you know, you don't want to touch that. It runs very efficiently. Now, if you do decide to build one of these and you do, you know, make it gas instead of electric, there is something you do have to do that I kind of found out by accident. Now, I already had these in here thinking of using it for a uh, evacuation system. In other words, get all the hot air out real quick. And anyway, that, that didn't work. But I have an inlet of cold room temperature air, just a pipe, uh, four inches in diameter down here at the bottom. Up at the top, I have another four inch diameter pipe, just AC denning that runs to the outside. What that does, it allows oxygen to get in here to keep that flame going. These two four inch pipes have baffles in them. If I close those baffles off, that flame will go out eventually. I've done that intentionally to see if it would. You don't get heat loss really uh, that I've been able to notice from four inch diameter pipes, one coming in, one going out. So I just leave the baffles all the way open. Like I said, takes 20 minutes for this thing to heat up and then uh, another 20 minutes of run time, maybe another 10 minutes to get the substrate, depending on how big it is, up to operating temperature, which is like I said, typically at 400 degrees. This particular heater is made by Mr. Heater Corporation, funny name, and it cost $110. The gauge that I run, you don't have to run a gauge on your propane tanks. I do because you never know when you're gonna run out of propane until your flame goes out. So it's just a, something for me to keep an eyeball on the propane because you don't want to run out of propane when you're halfway in the process of powder coating something. I've done that. It sucks. So anyway, that's when I got a gauge and put it on the tank. You can get those off of Amazon for 16 bucks. And um, the metal hose is $26. The metal hose that I'm pricing you You'll see a screenshot right here. That's a stainless steel hose, uh, 12 feet long. That's what I would use if I had to go back and do it again. I already had a rubber hose and I just simply screwed a short metal one onto it to get this to work. Uh, stainless steel, they're more flexible. Yeah, not, well, they're more flexible than that thing. I, I would go ahead and go with that. Yeah, for $26, I mean, why not? They're not that expensive. Like I said, the materials actually were under $1,000 for this whole thing. Now, that's not including the powder coat hooks. You can see them here. I got a close-up of them. Uh, this is a must, and I do suggest getting the swivel ones. I don't have a price on those. They're not very much. You can also get those off Amazon. Uh, while I'm filming this, I don't have a screenshot yet, so if, I'll put one up if I can find one. And anyway, those, those are great. 
uh, just some black iron pipe up at the top. These things, you know, move back and forth. All in all, uh, I, I did a very, this, this worked out much better than what I expected. Uh, I, I <laughs> have never powder coated with a big oven before. I've seen them used, but they were the manufactured type and they were electric and they had thermostats on them and the guys would, you know, wheel the product in on carts. Now, something else too. I insulated the bottom of this. You don't really have to have a bottom uh, with the, that's built like this. You can mount this thing directly to the concrete because you're only going up to 400 degrees and it's only for 20 minutes. That is not going to hurt concrete, I would not think. But I'm just very careful. So I went ahead and insulated the bottom. Uh, like I said, it's just considered one of the sides, one of the parts of this box. And I brought them in here individually, me and another guy, and I used metal self-tapping screws to hold all this together. And I wanna show you the little tabs that I used. Oh, while I got the door open though, right here on the edge is a sealer. And all this is, is the same thing that you use on barbecue pits. You can get these off of Amazon. Uh, it's cheap, it does not really cost that much. And it has a sticky side on the back, running around the door frame and it seals and it works great. Uh, let me go ahead and show you the tabs that hold all this mess together. Okay, uh, this is one and a half by two and a half, just strap iron. And what I did is I drilled four holes in it uh, previously before I put the self-tapping screws in. You don't have to drill through this with a self-tapping screw. Uh, just put holes in it a little bit bigger than the screw and that, that suffices. I've got uh, 12 to 14 of these little tabs all over this guy. And just once you get it square, like I said, two-man job, and, and we had tie-down straps around this thing, kind of holding it together. And I went along and put these tabs on Worked great, uh, no problem whatsoever. Now, if you look down here, also, as far as the hinges go, these are just heavy duty door hinges. I got these at Lowe's. That's all you need. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need a hinge going from bottom all the way up to the top. Uh, it, I, I've seen some guys do that. It's not necessary. Uh, just some good heavy duty door hinges. I've got uh, three of them on here and Works fine. I, I've used this considerably since I built it and I've had no issues with it. It has not failed me one time at all. Um, it, it's very, very efficient. You just have to stay here and watch the temperature on it to make sure that it doesn't get up above 400, 410 degrees. I, you have a little bit of a variable range in there. It doesn't have to be dead on 400, but I do keep it dead on 400 and it is not hard at all. Like I said, you just open up the door, let some of the hot air out, close it back up, and that's it. Oh yeah, and something else too. If you guys have any questions over this, uh, something that I didn't cover or something that, I don't know, you just have a question over, just go down in the comments below and uh, ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Also down below in the description area are my links to eBay for the diffusers for the powder coat gun, the Harbor Freight and also the Eastwood. So if you're looking to get into one of those, go down there, click on those links. Now this is the barbecue thermometer that I was telling you about. Uh, you can put it on either any side, you can put it on the door. It doesn't really matter where you put it. You just wanna make sure that you put it dead center in one of the sides. Uh, that way you get an equal reading. Uh, you don't want it too high, too low. And that's just the way it works in my mind. And like I said, this reads exactly what the laser temperature gauge does. So I'm happy with it. Apparently my guesstimation worked. Something about Rockwell, the insulation that I use, it does not have to be as thick as how it comes. In other words, it's meant to go inside of a wall, you know, it's three and a half inches. You can compress that down and it works fine. This right here, the walls on the left and the right side they're really thin. They're only an inch and a half. And all I did is I just compressed that down, put the sheet metal on it, crossed my fingers, and yeah, it worked. Uh, it, it stops the heat just fine. That's really about it. I mean, this is not rocket science at all. 
I was able to throw this thing together in a couple of days, called a friend of mine over and we buttoned it up and I used it that afternoon to, for a big job that I had. And, um, and it, like I said, it worked great. Now I did go ahead and anchor bolt this thing down. Not that I needed to, uh, it, it wasn't uneven. Uh, it, it just, I don't know. I, I just have a tendency to over-engineer, overbuild, and I don't plan on moving this thing at all. So this sits in one of the back rooms of my shop. Uh, I have a 2,400 square foot shop, and I have three rooms in the very back that are like, I don't know, 10 by 12, something like that. Anyway, that's where this bad boy sits. And that's it. I just wanted to get with you guys because I've had people ask me questions about it. And it's really funny, some of the questions that I get. Um, but anyway, uh, if you want to build your own walk-in oven, it can easily be done for under a thousand bucks. No problem. And no specialty tools. Like I said, you need a saw, you need a welder, you need a drill. That's it. Period. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, please, if you like it, Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know when my next video is coming out. And if I have any more powder coat videos coming up, I will definitely do them because you guys really seem to like those. And uh, I, I love, you know, sharing. So anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Bye now.